Hey guys, K2's Retro Workshop here. I know it's been a long time, I'm trying to work on some different formats and stuff that will work for the amount of time I have available to work on things. Um, today, for example, we're going to work on this Macintosh Classic 2. Uh, it's a late gen model, you can tell from the speaker grill. Um, nice little machines, I have one of these of my own, this is for someone else. But I noticed that for my channel and stuff, there are a lot of little projects that I do that I don't want to turn into huge things. You know, with a whole bunch of filming, a whole bunch of practicing, a whole bunch of, you know, scripts and all this stuff. I don't want to deal with any of that on some stuff. Uh, they're just quick little neat projects that I think people would like to see. So this is going to be a quick logic board recap of a Classic 2. Now, I'm going to power it on here. Uh, when they first got this machine, they said that it powered up and booted just fine. They played on it for a few hours. But after they moved it downstairs, it started doing this. Well, all of these machines get this Siamese Mac stripes on them and stuff, especially of the Classic 2s and the Classics, because the capacitors on the motherboard just start leaking and get, you know, terrible. So, we're going to take this guy apart, take the capacitors off, clean up the logic board, and get it going. Got my little Mac cracker here, so let's tear into this guy. Alright, now I will say that typically when I do these machines, I like to do a complete rebuild of them. The analog board caps all need work too, but uh, the owner of this machine only really wanted it back up and running. So uh, I think he's going to be going after a solid state hard drive and stuff too. But um, yeah, so this came from Edgar's in Las Cruces. Um, came with a case and everything. It's a pretty sweet little setup. And I'll have another video posted soon if I don't have it up already. Um, a little short video about Edgar's. I could go into details on that place forever. But, um, yeah, so, like I said, they said it worked and everything. And that's one of the nice things about getting stuff there is that you can see it working. So let's crack this guy open. Come on. Man, that top portion just does not like coming off. I usually have a lot of success with this move. Come on. I'm definitely not going to pry on it, that's for sure. Come on. It's almost there. Let's so knock everything else off my table here. Wow. Yeah, it's coming. Okay. There we go. Oh, nope. Almost. There we go. It looks brutal, but honestly, if you pry at this thing with a screwdriver, you're going to break it. It is going to um, dent in the plastic and stuff up here, mangle stuff. It looks terrible. Um, so, take a look at this guy. <clears throat> this is a shockingly clean example of one of these machines. This machine must not have... Oh, man. I'd be surprised if it had more than a couple hundred hours on it. It's in really good shape. So, let's disconnect our drives here and take a look at our motherboard. The fact that it booted up makes me pretty confident that I'm not opening this up to find, you know, capac you know, battery goo everywhere. So that's nice. And there it is. Nice. Couple megs of RAM in there. Clean. So, yeah, what gives it that look is this little sound chip right here. You can see all these capacitors that are around it and they all leak. So it's not super obvious just looking at it sometimes whether it's under there or not. But <clears throat> the Siamese pattern is this chip not allowing the processor to reset and what you're seeing is just, you know, what's written to the frame buffer during the initial hardware, you know, startup. So yeah, nice and clean. Let's go ahead and 
take the battery out of here, disarm the mom, and uh, remove some caps and get it cleaned up. I know it looks and it seems brutal to take them off that way, but as you can see, while the board is fairly clean everywhere else, uh, you can even get the reflection on here and not see really any goo has moved anywhere. That dry New Mexico air dried up the electrolyte real good. But underneath these caps, it's nasty. So what I'm gonna go in here and do, probably not gonna be easy to film, but I'm gonna clean this all off and then I'll come back, scrape off the uh, bits of, you know, capacitor legs with my soldering iron, put some new caps on there, and then fire it up again. Um, yeah, like I said, it looks brutal, but I have never actually um, messed up a pad taking caps off this way. I was doing like a two pencil method and a couple of other ways before, and every one of those resulted in at least one pad on a motherboard like this getting torn off. Never had a problem doing the twist off method like I showed you. So I'll be back after I clean it. All right, so we're here cleaning up the pads and to do this, I mean, it's pretty simple. Once you've broken the pads, once you've broken the capacitor off, you just have to heat the pad up a little bit with the soldering iron and then you just scrape a little bit and it comes right off. So this is how I clean up all the capacitor pads. On these particular logic boards, I like to put in the one microfarad tiny cap first. It's the first cap that I forget, um, and I end up putting 10 microfarad everywhere. So, we're going to do that one first. And the two one microfarads go here and here. The way I apply these caps is I will put a little fresh bit of um, solder on one side. And then I will grab my cap, minding my polarity, heat the pad up, and then apply the capacitor to one side. Now, you'll notice that I'm putting in <clears throat> electrolytic caps instead of tantalum. Um, there's a lot of argument either way, and, you know, I don't know that one way is really preferred over another. Uh, I like doing this because new caps are pretty stable. By the time these caps become a problem, this machine may not be my problem anymore. And while most new tantalums are fused internally, they aren't all fused. And that can cause you problems in, you know, the future. So... Yeah, just uh, cap on like that, one leg, and then tap on the other side, and it's done. We continue throughout the board, and finish populating it. Alright, so here we go. Rams reinstalled, brand new half double A. Rams back in. Um, all the caps are nice and brand new. You can tell from my 
You could tell it was a recap by me because it's got these red worth caps in there. I use them on everything. Um, never had a problem with them. They may not be, you know, a mainstream brand that most people use, but I like the look. So that's what I've gone with here. Uh, so let's put it back in the machine and see if it works. This machine is, uh, for its age, crazy clean. It, uh, you know, the fan's not even dirty on this thing. It couldn't have more than, um, oh. This thing couldn't have more than, I don't know, a couple hundred hours on it. It wasn't used very much before it was retired. Um, if you've ever used a Classic 2, you understand. Um, they're good machines, you know, 68030 at 16 megahertz and stuff, but the 16 megahertz bus that they put on there, um, you know, not really, uh, not really the best decision there, Apple. Uh, it slows it down quite a bit. It's still faster than a color classic because it only has to do black and white for video instead of, you know, full color. But, uh, yeah, not super quick. So, three wires. That's all you gotta hook up. Turn this guy around. Find what I did with my power cord here. Plug it in, and let's see if we get a bong. perfect. See what the video looks like when it comes up. See if the hard drive is still working. And there it is. Um, that's about as easy as it gets as far as uh, recap on one of these machines. And so yeah, just button it back up and you're good to go. I didn't hook up a keyboard or mouse to this so I have no way to actually mess with it at this point. Oh, I love that. The little uh, indicator in the corner for the hard drive being active. Shanghai, super clock. Yeah, there it is. It's booted. Perfect. Uh, that's it. Like I said, I'm going to do a few more of these kinds of videos and stuff because uh, I do do these little projects like this that are informative and, you know, they're easy and they're quick. I just don't really want to take the time to I don't want to turn that project into a multi week project just because I want to have everything set up right and perfect and all that other jazz so yeah let me know what you think below and um, check out my video on Edgar's uh, that place is crazy have a good day